biotechnology teachers, and you must be knowing about the basic biotechnology, so I didn't want to talk on that thing. But something that which has come up after 2003, we'll refer to that one, because 2003 happened to be a very important year, as that we had 50 years of completion of what's in that the DNA uh, model discovery by Watson, and that was the 2003 was the year when human genome was decoded, and we got the report of that one. So, the human genome project formally began in 1990. It was the U.S. human genome project, a 13-year effort coordinated by the U.S. Department of Energy and uh, National Institute of Health. It was originally planned for 15 years, but uh, with the rigorous uh, work in the laboratories, it would be completed uh, by 2003. That was two years ahead of that one. Uh, the completion of DNA sequences in spring of 2003 coincided with, as I told you, the 50th anniversary of Watson's description of the fundamental structure of DNA. The analytical power arising from the reference DNA sequence of the entire genomes and other genomic resources had jump started what some call the biology century, we call it. Uh, what are the main observations? See, the human genome contains 3.3 billion base pairs. All of us have the same number of base pairs, but the question is why we are so different from each other. And moreover, 99.9 percent of genome in all the individual is the same, and 0.1 percent makes a major difference based on the cells and SNPs. That is, we are different with regard to each other, 0.1 percent only. And you can imagine, 0.1 percent is not a small amount. If you look at a total 3.3 billion base pairs, it comes to a million base pairs. So we are different from each other in very, not only in the appearance, but in every aspect we are different. Even if we take water, we respond differently. Some people can take, say, 10 glasses of water, nothing happens. Others can take only 2 glasses of water. Or anything, whether we eat, we smell, we drink, or we respond to certain stimuli. And if I shout at somebody, he says, why am I shouting at him? And the girl said, no, he's an elder person, and uh, let him shout at me. I might have made some kind of mistake. So like that, things happen. And we respond differently to all the stimuli, and that is the basis of this 0.1% of difference within amongst all of us. See, what kind of genome sequencing? Once we have that information available, we are now in the post-genomic era which has opened up many new avenues for research as, which can lead to the human welfare, whether it's say, not only the human beings. In fact, that post genomic era, because when we uh, make the human genome sequencing, parallel, many other organisms were sequenced, and we could correlate with each other, we could find out how much of this individual, that now we can answer many questions and also pose many new questions for our welfare, for the, whether it's agriculture, it's a health, or environment, or food, anything but can it can come in. So it is possible that you know, to use genome sequence to a variety of automated laboratory equipment to do entirely new kinds of biology. Not just scaled up, but comprehensive genomics. The question is, what is genomics now? In a personal definition, the application of high throughput automated technologies in molecular biology. The philosophical definition is a holistic system approach to the study of information flow within a cell. So you can have a how do you feel? How do you want to define? You can have a personal definition, how it operates. Or philosophical, how do you think in that one? Now, genomic technology up there, automated DNA sequencing. Automated allocation of sequence, DNA microarray, gene expression, measure RNA levels, SMP genotyping, 
So you don't diagnostic, direct testing, proteomics, protein identification, protein protein interaction. Now, now we are in the era of X. We started with genotype and phenotype in 1900 when Mendel's laws were rediscovered by three scientists, and we had the term genotype phenotype, which continued. But during the 107 years, rather like 103 years from 2003, we have come into the era of X. That is, genotype has changed into genomics. And phenotype has changed into phenomics. That is, we have in between the transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics, and phenomics. Because we thought that once we have genomic information available, we have answer to every question. We were mistaken. And we thought, okay, yeah, because not all the genes are transcribing at all the same time. So let's see what is the product that we thought said task, task it as RNA. But not the whole of the RNA that might be transcribed is translated into a protein. We just said number goes on decreasing. We came to proteomic. We said, no, not all the proteins are functional. Some are functional sometimes, some are not. And they are in different tissues, they function differently. It's okay, let's talk about metabolomics. Metabolism. Because how the proteins work. But again, key, whether metabolism may be the same in all, but still phenotype is different. So that gives us phenomics. That we can uh, have a knockout or addition, all the genes, and well, what happens to the body. So come to that. Genotype, phenotype, so genomics and phenomics, but a basic aspect of the same. It has taken almost 100 years to come to this, that is changing type to X. So we are in that era. What new X will come in the coming days, we do not know yet, but different things are taking place. Where we have for genomic done to phenomics, but in between things came, and we have a genomic, a genomic, a this genomics and Genomics coming this, but so what is the basis of this? Presumably, why we are different from each other? We have found that 0.1 percent genome is different. So what is that? So common thing what we call single nucleotide polymorphism. That we have all the genes. There may be 30 to 35,000 genes in all of us, but are the genes similar? Basic structure is similar, but they may be different from each other with one of the two nucleotides. How come? Original man maybe might have originated from Africa. He migrated to different areas. That means he migrated to different locations, having different environmental status. And he had to adjust. So in ecology, there are two terms. One is the bottlenecking, and then the second is the foundation effect. What is that? That whenever there is some environmental change, there is that some of the individuals can cross those environmental stresses and then they settle the new place. If they are able to settle, they have to bring some changes. First, those who are strong enough, they will pass through those very ecological disasters. That's a bottlenecking. And you have a bottle, you have some insects in that, for example. You put some water in that one. Some of the insects will die in the water, a fixation. Others will try to come out. Who are those which they come out? That means they are strong enough. That means those who are able to bring some changes and genes, and they come out. But even after coming out, they have to settle into a new environment. That means they have to again bring some changes in them. And then they will settle, other will perish. So that means they are the first mutations. Any change that is occurring in the DNA or the gene is a mutation. But if that mutation stabilizes, because mutations can be toxic or mutation can be stabilizers. Those become stabilizers, they become the SNPs. So having SNP does not mean it immediately occurs. It may take thousands of years to establish. And as in human or men, uh, human beings migrated to different areas of the world, they had to 
get adjusted to new areas, that means they have to bring changes in their genes as they get younger. So that is how we are having different populations with different SNP. Basic, so genome remains the same, but the gene structure may have a little different with single diploid. Now these are present in various locations because our genotype is made up of non-genic and genic region. Now if it is a non-genic region, it may not be affected because if it is a non-genic hybrid region, definitely it is effective. If it is in the, uh, the operating frame, it is effective. If it is in the promoter region, again it is more effective. So on the effect of the SNP, there are more than 500,000 SNPs present in our genotype. But not all are having the same impression. So what happens? That is the SNP is a promoter. But that means the total expression level of the gene will change. A protein may be expressed in a particular amount with a particular type of SNP and it may increase or decrease in the other. So that shows that we have all the individual differences in with regard to the genome. That some people have the different SNPs, other are different. That is why we respond differently to all these stimuli, whether it's a drug stimulus, or it's a environmental stimulus, or it's a diet stimulus, or it's a aggression stimulus, anything, or a professional signal. Because we have a professional gene also, we can find the professional gene up here and see it's just a microwave with a, uh, if somebody has a professional gene of a doctor, and if he starts uh, doing a business, he can never be a successful doctor. He will be more businessman or a vice versa. If a businessman, if he has a bad type of genotype, becomes a doctor, he will all keep on doing the business. A teacher, he will keep on doing the tuitions. If he's a, if the thing may be clear in the coming times that even the professional genes are there, which make the person directed towards a particular profession, but if circumstances are forced to take another profession, he may not be successful in that profession. It is just a light way. But the things may come up in that way. So a change in a single base shows an altered expression of the gene. And many such changes are studied in the different populations, revealing ethnic differences, and hence differential metabolic response. In fact, there are more than 500,000 SMPs in our genome, but only a few of them are effective in a real sense. Now, let's please. So this is how it looks like. That we have a AT in a box. It may change to GC. Just single base. And you have so many different populations which are shown there. <coughs> now, I'll give you an example of how the is effective. How the SMPs are effective. And uh, I can give you examples of my own work, which I've been doing on the cancer. We say that cancer is environmental. It's caused by smoking, RNA degradation, then alcoholic life, diet, pollution, sexual behavior, infection, industrial products, medical drugs, food related, alcohol. But are these all the people who are exposed to radiation like the cancer? When they uh, Hiroshima had a bomb blast bomb with the not all of them died. Only a couple of them died. Or even the epidemics there, not all the people died. Just a couple of them die, others survive. That means their genotype is such which keeps them to remain alive, others die. So that's why we say, if I say smoking causes cancer, some will just get up, no. My dad is in it for 100 years. And he was smoking hookah all the time. He's never died, he didn't die of the cancer. How could I say that smoking causes a cancer? So, because his genotype may be such that that made him to survive even by smoking the ruka or whatever it is. So, now what we find that whatever we eat, we drink, we smoke, everything gets metabolized in our body. And it is that process of metabolism which will determine whether a metabolite will be produced that will cause a cancer or person will survive. Because there are certain metabolites which may produce free radicals and 
it gets in the returns. But in other people, those metabolites will be excreted out immediately. That nothing remains in the inside the body and nothing will happen. So, overall, if you look at a metabolism, we have three phases of metabolism phase one, phase two, and phase three. Now, it depends upon the product of the phase one, what will happen in the phase two, and it depends on phase, product phase two, product phase three. So, but the metabolism, which we know is controlled by certain enzymes, but the phase one is controlled mostly by the cytochrome of P450. Now, this is not one enzyme. It's a big family of enzymes. And that is because of the variation in the base protection of that cell. So we have cytochrome P450, the big family, which I showed you just now. Then, whatever is there in the body, we know that the cells have to proliferate. Now, cell proliferation, even if it becomes abnormal due to the product of the metabolism, it may become a cancerous. Or the cell may go on normal. Now, we have a couple of genes which are controlling the cell cycle. Now, those genes which are producing proteins basically in cell cycle, so cyclin, active, adenine, all, all those are involved in cell cycle. Even P53, which is a master gene, is a regulatory gene, is again, they are all polymorphic. They also show the single base pair changes, single liberatory polymorphism. That's why. So, then, even if they, uh, these products of the metabolism cause some damage to the DNA, normally what we have a trend that the DNA repair mechanism is there. Any damage caused to DNA is repaired. But those repaired genes, which are responsible for this purpose, they are again polymorphic. That it depends. In certain cases, if you have a wound, you get immediate healing is there. Some people take a long time. Why? And other interesting, even inflammation is there. Why? Because DNA is repaired. Genes are again polymorphic. And some, the proteins are produced, is repaired proteins are produced in such a fast manner that DNA repair gets done. In other, they are produced in so low amount that repair takes longer time. By that, some more complications may occur. And then we have immunomodulatory genes. You see that whenever some wound is there, or some, we say 19, more than 90% of women are infected with HPV, human papilloma virus, which is considered as a prerequisite for cervical cancer. And the question is do all the 90% of women? Blood the cervical cancer? It's no, only a fraction of them develop. Why? Because the human papilloma virus may be impacting the cervix, but it depends that what is the situation of the immunomodulatory genes that is pro inflammatory and anti inflammatory genes. These are with the cytokines. So, whether a person has the, the pro inflammatory gene uh, uh, secreting more proteins. Situation will be different. In adults, we say anti inflammatory uh, genes are significantly more produced, the situation is different. So, it is a, uh, what we can say, a relationship between pro inflammatory and anti inflammatory genes which will determine whether the HP will stay in the body or it will wash down or it will just embed it, it will be dormant because even AIDS, you know that once the person gets a infected AIDS, he may not have a full blown disease for even 20 years. But some other people may have immediate full blown disease. May die within six months of infection or less than that. Other may survive for 10 years. Because it is the nature of the cytokine that determines whether the HPV will or HIV will stay in the body or washed out in the body or it will become immediately effective. That determined by immunomodulatory genes. Then, transportation. You know that anything, whichever is taken inside, it has to move into the cell. And that means we require certain proteins for that movement. Motor proteins, receptor proteins, and, and some which can carry them. So, they are transported. Whether the product or the main thing will enter into the cell to go to the DNA or not, 
it's a transport mode. So then we are polymorphic. We are different with the different liquids. And then oxygen and antimony oxygen. And we have in our body and oxygen and antimony is a is a regular uh, uh, genes which are playing major roles in the body metabolism and body functioning. But in some, they will immediately become cancerous. So they are obviously they are not oncogenes. Others they will remain as such. So what is the body effect? That's again in polymorphic cancer. You can see that whole situation of the cancer development, which is a multi-step thing, it is depending upon the total pattern of genotype what we have in us. So we are a product of a total set of genotype. That it's not that if we study one gene in one person, we say he will get the cancer. No, what are the other genes involved in that one? Now the time has come that we must have. If we want to know the susceptibility of developing a disease or a risk genotype, we should have a complete picture of genes involved in that early process. What we call the genomic studies, and that's the days were far out. But the technology became so fast. When we started, we have to study only single one of one gene and polymorphism, which is very cumbersome. If you start studying the genotype of the total Indians, I think it will take hundreds of years. By that way, but we have a very rapid technology. A micro technology has come, which is fast moving, and that may help us to have in the, the total genome of a person in the pocket, in the pen drive, or in the CD. And then you want to determine whether you are at risk or not, or to whom to marry. See, what do you need to do? You go to Pandiji and ask Pandiji, "What are you going to do? What are you going to do?" पैंतीस मिल जाते बहुत बढ़िया पच्चीस मिलते हैं ठीक ठीक है सोलह तो तो लो देख लो ठीक है ना now that is good here we are counting all the thirty thousand thirty five thousand genes that you can just match them up how much the uh, compatibility is there so you, who will be the pundit now in the coming years it will be geneticist who will be a pundit for determining to whom to marry to whom not to marry and what type of thing you want to have In future, so you will have all your genotype available in your uh, pocket, and then you can look for it. No need of going to Pandiji and paying the uh, hundred rupees or so. So you can pay person like me. I can do that. You see, this is the metabolic pathway of the person. Now we have an environmental chemical which can get metabolic activation. It can produce a reactive intermediate which can. From a covalent uh, DNA adapts, and it may be to the side that the step of transfer cell will go out. No impact will be there. Our mutation of the changes may take a part, and that can lead to cancer. Now, the metabolic detoxification, when any product is there, it is not survive, and it goes out. Now, covalent DNA repair is there, then normal DNA may become. So this is a total thing. It depends at what is the gene type at different stage. Because in each stage, as I have told you now, so many genes are involved, and we have to look at what are the genes involved in metabolic activation, metabolic detoxification, and repair, as well as the cell cycle, apoptosis, death, apoptosis. That no problem if the cell is. I mean, normally what happens in cell cycle that we have a G0 phase, G1. Then M phase, and then S phase, and G to M. Now, in order to pass the cell from G zero to G one, okay. Now, now there is a uh, cell growth takes place. When that cell growth takes place, it's a P fifty three, which will look at that whether the cell is growing properly or not. Has it got all the components to move on to the S phase or not? If it is not, the P53 last is cell. No, you have to have a full growth factor, and you have to have a complete uh, normal DNA. Only then I will allow you to move to the S phase. Then the P53 acts as a gatekeeper to determine or uh, that whether he has a uh, passport with a visa or a proper visa or not. If a proper visa is not there, he asks, "Okay, go back and get a proper visa." Then the cell enters into 
last phase. Again, the replication takes place, and the gear rounds of P53 through its agents determine whether the replication is complete or not. It's a perfect or not. If there's any damage, it's asked the cell to repair. If there is failed to repair, it asks the cell, okay, you are not capable, you have to commit suicide, you go for apoptosis. And same thing happens in the G2M phase also. There also, if the proper process not taken place, there's some mutation of the DNA, P53 will ask, okay, you have to repair it. Only then I'll ask you, uh, allow you to go to M phase and to cycling one, otherwise you have to stay here. And if it fails to do that, we will ask him to commit the suicide. So, very good mechanism is there. Control with it, but if P53 itself becomes a new, uh, new becomes a mutated, then that's one which is regulating. Agar wo jo gate keeper hi hai, wohi krap ke nikal jaye, to kya hoga? That cell will pass on to the next phase, hiding the mutation, and that will become a cancer. So, if P53 mutation ho jati hai, to kya wo apne aapi ineligible ho jata hai, check karne ke liye. It's, he's unable to check his cell, and that means cell will have to go as a cancer, I don't know if you think that perfect that, get people perfect that, study it, then the cell will not become a cancerous. And if it is weak or mutated, it will fail to detect any change in the DNA of the cell, and the cell will become a cancerous. So, this is a total story which becomes very interesting when we look at it, study it, but it needs a lot of common study and not with that. Genomic level. This is all the thing. We have a benzopyrin. A benzopyrin is a present in the cigarette smoke. It is one which causes a cancer. Now, so whether a cigarette smoke will cause a cancer or not, it will determine that under SIP1A1 one one is a gene. Now, SIP is a uh, what we can say, short name of cytochrome P450. 1A1, because it belongs to family 1. Subfamily A and sub subfamily 1. I'll show you the picture also. So, so that determines whether benzopyrin will form benzopyrin 7 8 oxide. Then we have epoxide hydrolase. It will determine benzopyrin 7 8 dehydrodial will form the one. Then another gene comes in between. That's it. 3 A4. That will determine whether the oxide is to form the one. And these are the, again, all the three epoxide, they are the polymorphic. They may make this product, that's a pyrin, to be excreted out or to stay, or to produce a free radical, or its product goes to the phase two, which is it will lead to the formation of ultimate carcinogen or x ray product. Now, the role of metabolic enzymes, the genetic variations of metabolic enzymes, and this is the particular population leading to inter-individual differences to metal capacity. <laughs> Phase 1 gene, which I would refer to, mostly cytochrome P450 genes besides others, 126 families of sick P450 genes. We never knew that one. How is so? See, you can have 126. There may be each family may have 5, 6 members, raised to 5, and then each family may have a 5, 6, six subfamily, raised to 5, 6, and each subfamily number of a subfamily number, you can see how many cytochrome P450 genes. There are millions of cytochrome P450 if we look at this single gene pool, and that is why we are different with regard to metabolism. No two individuals enjoy the tea the same way. Some can take one cup, other can not take half cup even. Some can take 10 cups. This is absolutely clear. But some have a lot of puff, and you know, and somebody just cuts his cigarette to mouth, he'll start sneezing and coughing like that one. But some can take whole day because of these. Okay, how many trees are there? These sub trees are there, and you have so family. <laughs> we have seven sub trees. So, for example, sub two a foot. It is a sub. And I give an example of alcohol. CYP2E1 is the one which metabolizes. Now, how do 
why do we respond differently from our home? We thought, just take one, one cup, and we can get the pen, because I don't take alcohol, and uh, with one egg, egg, my God, they start shouting, and others take so many, we may have their private sector of 15 minutes as a day. So we have to know different substrates of different uh, genes uh, where they grow, and the protein is coming from that side. Other genes are metabolism are, besides cytochrome B450, the thyroid methyl transferase, dopaminergic receptors and neurotrepids, hypoxide hydrolase, all genes, I'm not going to details of these. Then cell cycle regulatory genes I've already talked, CCN and D1, which is cyclin D. You know that cyclin is a major gene involved in cell cycle. It's a highly polymorphic, and it will determine why the two cells in the same stream uh, divide in a different time. They take different time to grow. Same population, but two cells divide in a different time to grow. Or differently, it's because of the polymorphism of this one. Then there are DNA repair genes. Some are, see, damage and responses are there. Cell cycle arrest, transcription, operation, or they may need to cell to commit suicide as a program cell that apoptosis. We have a different type that we, if the base procedure repair is there, we require XRCC1. If there is a double stand break, we come with a repair, we need XRCC3. Or nucleotide accident repair, XPD. Or if mismatch repair, MLH1, MLH2, PMS2, MSC. So all these different types of repairs are carried by different genes. It's not one DNA repair gene, mind you. It's a multiple, and each one of them is a then uh, onco and anti -onco genes, we know that in major cancers, we have uh, oncogenes involved, RAS is involved in many, many cancers, MIC is involved in large more can cancers, EDB family, you know, again the large group cancers, anti oncogene, retinoblast tumor gene, RBG, P16, P50, P53, P53 is a really sharp gene, okay, then P19 era, and cycling B1, all these are there. Now, say P53, again, even in normal cells, in a normal cell also, in normal NDT also, it has a polymorphism at a particular region, particular cell to codon. Now, that makes the people, some people are most susceptible to cancer, others to resistant to cancer. Because this is the one which has been found to be of a great importance. Because it may, may they make the cell to move very slowly, or very fast, but many of the polymorphic found on P53, 72 codon, have been associated with. In certain cases, they're protective, in other cases, it's effective. It's not that one polymorphism will always be leading towards a cancer. In one population, that may be effective. In other population, that very polymorphism may be protective. So it's not that all the populations, that if you are looking at a gene of Japan, you find a particular gene is a protective, and it should be effective in, uh, protective in India, you are wrong. Or in America, if American, a certain American country group is showing a particular gene to be a risk factor gene, it's, it may not be in India. In India, it may be a protective one. And that's all the total data has been collected, and if you compare it, you find that each ethnic group has its own genotypic pattern, and that is why they are responding differently. That people from Chennai, I don't know how many are there, and they are in Andhra, they can take too, too much chilies. They can take too much chilies, or they can take too much tamarind, isn't it? And other people from Punjab, if they eat golden pass for two days, they will have so much cut throat and the sore throat, you can imagine. Because your genetic life is such that you can metabolize tamarind much faster, and we cannot do that one, so we are responsible. So this is one common example. And you can take a lot of chilies, we cannot take chilies. We will have a, so we take chilies, we will have certain cancer also, but you will not, because it's a part of your diet. And say, for example, in a son, there's a population, they don't develop the throat cancer as, as much as we develop when we move to a son. 
because I don't need a type of sector we build it, even if we inject 10 big orders, which is there, it is at least much faster, and that becomes a concentration. But in the assemblies, they take such a diet of such population, such genotype is there, that even we is not released much so faster. So in migratory population, they have to kind of make themselves much faster than the local population. So you can imagine that when all the things happen. So, I just say, this is what I'm talking about. But if you look at the, see, in fact, only one pattern should be given. You can, you can find a different factors. We are different polymorphic forms just with regard to single gauge chemical. It is uh, determined by PCR method. When we cut the structural design, then we get a different pattern because the different sites are there and uh, some will be recognized, others will not recognize. So banding pattern is different and it needs to analyze. You can see that the lane 1 and 8, heterozygous mutant, it has three bands, 199, 136 base pairs, 237 homozygous, only one band is there because the the slow cutting point, and uh, then you go the wide land for and set. So, 100 days, that's a big in the market. That's how we come here. We have studied, I uh, mean, lot more genes in a lot of cancers, and our data has been published in uh, various international journals in the last three to four years. And in fact, we have been a pioneer for such a work in there. We have passed for the genes that are today, multiple drug resistant genes, then the MRK, multiple drug resistant associated proteins. The transport was not only transport covalently bound conjugates, but also unconjugate tensiophilic alloys. They transport drugs, causing many cancer specific agents. So, some people respond uh, to a drug very immediately as a neuron, because that may not be transported. Or it may be exodidum. It is the MBR gene which will determine whether the drug has to move in and stay there, or that they move in. That get a detoxified immediately, or that may be may not be allowed to go in, or if it goes in, it may be shunted out immediately. So you have to get a guess that how you will behave it. It's a nature which will determine whether you want to make the guest to enter inside, or just entertain on the door, or just say shut the door. No, or we don't want you. Or you bring him in and beat him while you are coming to us. So the same way the cell behaves with the blood, and who determines? It is that transport or one. That will determine if what has to be done. That's how we respond differently to the drug. Then, as I told you, all of viruses, we have a DHPV. Now, they, besides the number of moderate genes, even human capillary virus, we know that there are large number of genes uh, at, at the virus work. There are high risk people of viruses, there will be high risk, there will be low risk. But what determines that? Again, their genotype. We know that in the HP16 and 18 are causing the cervical cancer. They're very uh, strong risk of cervical cancer. Because there are two genes in that E6 uh, and E7. Now, E6 and E7, one will bind to the retinoblastoma gene, others have to get a P53. So that means they will not let the RB to work as a protective NPM to gene, and they will not allow the PP32 to work as a the protective gene. So if the P53 is approgated or a retinoblastoma is approgated, the cancer will be caused. Okay, so what determines E6 and E7 of the HPV, but E6 E7 also polymorphic. They are variants. They are variants, and different populations have different variants. We have seen in the North Indian population, there's a very clear cut change in the base spectrum uh, then with regard to the population. Then the local daily population. So we can see that the, these, that's why we, even when we are talking about developing the human papillomavirus vaccines, the vaccines are not against the L1 and L2 ridges of the HPV. Now L1 L2 are on the polymorphic. So vaccine work for one population will work only that very population, if you are going to get it, see Punjabi, uh, say Banyas, or Khatris, they may not work against the Haryani, Banyas, and Haryani Khatris. It is a factory group, so we have to work on each of the ethnic groups for that very purpose. 
So this is how we have a e, e6 and e7, which I told you. e6 binds to the group 3 and the ring, and e7 to the retinoblastoma. So they have a different targets for receptors of cell cycle. Then it will determine how much capability of e6 is there. So for example, how the things work in our body. That is the compatibility. Any protein which has to act on a substrate, it must be compatible. The better the compatibility is, better the primary. If this is little bit scratch is there, then you become a loser. Is it? So it is the compatibility between substrate and the protein which will determine how much effectiveness it is. And if there is a change in the base, P six and E seven, the compatibility may be faulty. So that is how they will work differently on the retinoblastoma and P fifty three depending on the compatibility, which is again based on the single basis. And L1 and L2, they are a capsule protein, and they will reproduce the lexis. Okay? Now, these are also, really, because these are proteins, which are capsule, you know, the quad proteins are there, that's how we can develop the lexis, but the multiple factor of the base pairs and the genes of the L1 and L2, so that is why our lexis is not successful so far. We should have done by now. It's not because it is different in the different populations. It may work in a particular pocket of people. It may not work in the whole rest of the population. So we have to develop vaccine for depending upon the HPV, L1, L2 factor. And for that, we have to look at the genome for that factor. So this is how we, the cycle of the E6 binds to P53 and it works. We have some underground details. This is the how the HPV group so you can see that uh, again we have the different factors of the HPV available. Now, I call the monomodulated genes. Coming to cytokines, as you know, we have interleukins, colony stimulating factors, DNA family, chemokines, plasma growth factors, migration factors. All these are genes which have been determined, and they are which are box. They have been only studied for the polymorphic nature. And then, then the correlation with the diseases. Because what we want to see, just determining a human papilloma virus will not work that we should start giving a drug to a person. We may kill the person with the drug. So we must look upon the pattern of the immune system. That polymorphic nature of these studies, that there may be a protective uh, cytokine may be there, and uh, that may not let the HPV to work. That may let the HPV to remain dormant, but that may wash out the HPV. So just looking at the HPV pattern may not help us for going for the therapeutics or the protection. We must look at the total pattern of cytokine genes, and that's how we have to look at it. So we have worked on uh, oral lung cancer, oesophageal cancer, bladder, breast, prostate, and then congestive obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, which is a uh, this is uh, asthma, asthma, cold, and all those mixtures there. Then metabolic X syndrome. There is a metabolic syndrome. See, certain uh, uh, people have a diabetes, hypertension, and hypoglycemia. Uh, and when there are three of them, there are five conditions there. If three of them, persons become more susceptible to care. That's what we call the metabolic X syndrome. In this study of the care, it becomes very important, particularly in this country, that Asians have a much more uh, rate of the metabolic syndrome, and that's why the rate of that is increasing. So we must look at the population who are susceptible to this very uh, disease. And then, say, we have worked on cervix cancer. So I'll just tell you, just to give an example, that uh, what we have worked, we have worked on so many cancers, but in cervix cancer, we find that 90% of cervix cancers are sequenced in carcinomas, which originate in the thin, flat squamous cells on the surface of the ectocervix. That's a cervix where the cancer occurs. You can just see that cancer tissue falls over there, and that's an opening over there. And uh, the cervix cancer is the third most common cancer worldwide. And 493 new cases identified each year worldwide. 80% new cases occur in developing countries. At least 273,000 women die of cervix cancer each year. And 130,000 new cases of cervix cancer 
that occurred in India earlier and spoke to almost 50% of uh, female uh, deaths. That's why we are very much concerned that every day at least five, six cases are coming to people who are suffering from cancer. And if the thing goes and increases at that point, I think that we are going to be in trouble. So we must secure the populations who are susceptible to drug and service cancer so that protective measures can be taken for that very purpose. So incidence of various cancer, so you can look at the uh, daily, the breast cancer number one, Bangalore cervix, the Bhopal cervix, Chennai cervix, Mumbai breast cancer. It has different environmental factors, different, different diet factors, different life factors. That's how it varies. In the, see, you can look at the, the surveillance is very low in daily. Bangalore, over in low. Bhopal, Usubi is low, Chennai, Uri, Mumbai, Uri is there. So, that's how we have a different factor. So, we have to have a, uh, the studies according to the prevalence of the cancer incidence in different populations. So, that it's not that somebody working in one cancer everywhere in India is sugar. It should be the requirement of a particular region. Now, natural service cancer is that we have. A normal cervix, you can see. Then the accurate related changes may be there, but they may be repaired depending on the immune system. Uh, the low grade assays may be caused that may progress in three, four years to high grade scarlet cell leukemia, uh, the cancer, and 30 years of progress in 10 years to invasive cancer, and this may be there. But here, at certain other Aspirin infection in the first stage may lead to repair also or may lead to cancer. Then four factors will again work over there. Some more secondary infection may occur and that can lead to the cancer. So this is a cancer. The first day aspirin we know that. Then we have a young age at marriage, multiple sex partners, high risk male partner, also multiple female partner is there. Then cigarette smoking. Active and passive. The question is that what is passive smoking? That if husband is smoking and women may drug the cervical cancer, you will ask how? How come? You see what happens? The when coitus is there, when mating is there, with the semen, the products of the cigarette also pass on to the women. And they attack the cervical wall. And that's how cancer is done. That there are toxic products and metabolites of the cigarette smoke, which of course they go through the inhaled inhalation also, but during mating, fighters, it is part the metabolites are passed on to the cervix of the women and they attack the wall and they are the to cancer. So that's a passive smoking is very harmful because they are the active metabolites which are being passed from the semen to the women. So we get some passive smoking. We have already published two papers on this, the impact of passive smoking on the rectal cervix cancer with a factor of zero time. We are in the cancer clinic and cyber is published last year. The number of pregnancies, use of wood for cooking. It's not, not, not a thought of. Then what is wood is because wood also can be smoke. And certain metal organic metabolites are there and they are inhaled by women and that can be the problem. Then they use of oral contraceptives, social development factors, some nutrition factor, vitamin E, vitamin C, folic acid deficiency, and particularly now we know vitamin D is also in mind. So this is all. What are some ways? Experimental infection. This is in summary form the first one that we told you. Assistant experimental infection. Then we have. The cervical dysplasia, the cancerous, cervix cancer in the occur. These are various stages that the control can be there at different stages, provided we know the total cycle. And in three stage, the genes are involved. It's not that you can study only one gene, you have study all the genes and all the. So, this is I told you, look, different experiments. And you can see that uh, in India also, quite a high rate of all other countries there. See, in drug and drug countries, we can have the 
important information to bring up to be of interest to you. Uh, Echo 16 is the most common infected by the B missing and it is just discovered carcinoma, 50 to 60 percent. Followed by Echo 18, which affects about 15 percent of the tumors. Actually, contrary to carcinoma, since and tumor prevention to the other two infections, E6 and E7, which I already told you. So this told you. Now, which I have told you, they can be distributed to TH1 and TH2. TH1 produce the interleukins, IL2, interleukin gamma, IL12, TNF alpha, and also promotes self regulatory immunity. The other one is the IL4, IL5, IL6, IL10, and present humoral immunity. The two type of immunity you know that. This is cell mediated and human And they are controlled by different cytokines, and that's why they are neither in pro inflammatory and anti inflammatory accordingly. See, sometimes we need information. Sometimes information causes actually it's a problematic. But sometimes we induce the inflammation because that may help in healing. So, whenever you see something is there, the inflammation causes inside. Why that is the cause? That this is caused. Why? Because the cytokines move over there and they start repairing. But sometimes if the wound is there, then inflammation is caused, which is a dangerous one. So, what, what will control that inflammation or anti inflammation that is controlled by these very. So, whenever we have some information, we have to see what is the pattern of uh, genotype and which will lead to a stay of that inflammation. Information be curing one, it is the same thing at one stage cures and at another stage it causes a disease. And that is determined by the level of TH1 and TH2 because as, as per a normal wild type gene, all should have the same amount of protein, same amount of cytokines, but they are different in different individuals because of the different pattern of the genes present over there that we discuss it. You can see pro inflammatory cytokines, IL1, IL6, TN alpha, FN alpha, FN beta, are in upregulation, IL1, IL6, 11 alpha, and then in pro inflammatory cytokines, IL4, IL6, IL13. So we have uh, classified all of them, and these are being studied in another body also. If somebody is interested, you can come down and I'll show you these, all these patterns when you look at it. Uh, Driver of human cancer is favored by the preponderance of inflammatory TH2 type immune responses. A relative lack of pro inflammatory and TH1 type cytokines. And pro inflammation is not there, it may cause a cancer or preponderance anti inflammatory. It will die by it, so then cancer will occur. So the two, it's a balance, I say, amount which will determine. Whether you are susceptible to cancer or cancer. So, just study the total pattern of the neurogenic genes, immunomodulated genes, may determine how much we are susceptible to cancer, but not study only one IL1 or IL2 study will do it. No, we have to have a total genotype. See, these are the polymorphic forms which are we have seen in different regions. I won't go, but I just come down to the what I mean by. See, basically, most of these studies have been carried on topics of the world. What we want to look at is, what is our target? Our target is that when I take a drug, I should be get cured. But normally when you take a paracetamol, if you have a headache, you get cured. But if you recommend that person to your friend, he cannot get cured. Or you go to a doctor, you can then take it, then you come to your doctor, the doctor acts is very good, he has treated me. Your friend goes, he doesn't get treated. He says, You are his enemy, you recommended the doctor to me. It's not a fault of your friend or the doctor, because your genotype may be different from your friend's genotype. And that's why drug has not worked. What is basically there? It depends upon our genotype. Whether the drug will work, the drug will stay inside the body, 
God will be excluded by that. So that's why what we call the uh, individualized drug. We have to go for the individualized drugs or personal drugs. That is, a drug is drug for each one individual. Since the study of genotype will be different for all the individuals, we say that we must have a quick information. So that drug was Japanese, according to their own genotype, is good for the Japanese. And that one for Americans is good for Americans. They cannot do for us. If we have to tell that molecular drug or astral drug, then we have to study our own genotype. And people are trying from the world over to just steal our own uh, material, genotype, and then we drug and send to us. We have to do that. We have to study our own genotype, get our own drugs, lest they will take our genotype, get the drug, send to us the same way that we've been tested, we've been tested, which is with our own plants in Carousia, that our own plants, they have taken away, produced the drug, sent back to us, and how do we a capsule or something like that. I think that I was gone. We are both enough. We have to have a own picture of the living. And we know that which are the genotypes. Uh, you see, I can we have a main gene. If we cut with that, uh, this one, this six enzyme, but we have, we get this picture. Yeah, this is what, you can see the variance in HPV itself. Just a single base variance. You look at different populations, African nations have this variant, uh, then Indians have this variant over here in a different way. So these variants make us different from different populations. You see, the different distribution of different genotypes of IL6 and other genes, the different distribution we have calculated. I won't go into much details of these. I just come back to last where we have found out certain genotypes. You can say that at variant one is going to be fixed. You have a normal and then it's a variable. And this is how we can correlate with pattern of variants in different populations and see the, what is the relationship. How the population might have migrated and brought these changes. Only by studying this polymorphism, you can have answered many questions. Not only susceptibility, not only drug response, but also the total evolution of the population, the human population, on the basis of the infection pattern also. Then many questions can be answered. Yeah. Then we are also studying expression study. See, how I'm saying that different polymorphic form gives a different protein level. Then we are confirming this expression pattern. We are studying certain uh, genes and expect pattern. I won't go into here. See, higher level is level. I'll let you know what was found in patient samples in comparison to the healthy control. That IL-18, which is a different polymer form of cancer, shows a different expression pattern than the control. You see that expression patterns? It's not done by RT-PCR, PCR, all those things have been done. Yeah, in service cancer, what is the data? Form of a data that is studying the 150 service cancer cases and 150 controls. Out of 150 cancer cases, 131 had SCC, external cell carcinoma, and 19 were the adenocarcinoma. Most of the studies, because it's a superficial, so the virus infecting superficial cells, that's why external cell carcinoma is there. Most of the study parts about from the state of Punjab, for Ariana, Himachal Pradesh. 80% of the patients have the social climate status and 81% of them in detail as well as they are not known. Uh, the controls cases young age at the time of marriage and birth of first child and had a great main number of children. 44 to 7 of the cases and 41 to 3 of the controls were person smokers and in marked increase in OR was observed amongst person smokers. So, use of dairy contraceptive was found to decrease the risk of service cancer, but oral contraceptive increased the risk to 1.6 fold. So, that's the problem. Again, those who had tobacco were also at the increased risk of service cancer. This is how the level of the different viruses was found. Now, this is what we say. Uh, when I talk about a genotype, when we analyze 
as a genotype, single gene base and the combination of gene base. That gives us a total picture that is one gene may be making a susceptible, other may be a protective. When both combine, how much a risk is left? So that means you have to study the whole genotype. And not only this, but the whole genotype with metabolic genes, DNA repair gene, cell cycle gene, cytokine genes, when you compare all and combine all of them, then determine how much a risk is there. And that will be of much more than studying only this one. So at the end of the if the AG genotype is there, there is a three times more high risk of genetic cancer. But who knows that there may be other protective genes of P53 which will reduce this to one. So we have to, we can't study only this one. Then we have seen that unless we study the other one. So similarly, these are the genes which have shown the effect. Of course, you can see smoking also. The risk to be, in this case, the risk is 7.2. So, uh, IL1, so you have this very low risk is there, not much. So we have started cancers also. Same point one, we have seen the young, usobagil, bladder, and cervix. They are here. The same point one, if this polymorphic is there, the risk is 5.41 with this gene, no risk for lung cancer, no risk for bladder, no for cervix, but with this 2A, 2A, except one same gene, risk of lung cancer to be three times. So it's not that the same gene preserves all type of cancer, it varies from cancer to cancer, that's how we have to work it. Or this are GSTT19, these are the risks. But if it's not, this will cause a risk to other ones. Similarly, we have a NAC genes, which are the smoke uh, detoxification genes that they are there. And here also, we have studied not in all them, just only lung, we find that this one genotype is making the person the most susceptible to prostate cancer. And this one for NAC6, three times more cancer is there. And P3 coda, which I talked about, if we have a proline, proline genotype, because they are two genes that we have for each, it's a 2.25 for so so if you consider no other cancer and the risk of this one. Similarly here, with the Faxar CC1, this gene type has a very low risk, now it's a protective. It is a protective one, this one's a protective. So we combine IL-10, TNF-R, XPD, GSTM1, when we combine them, we calculate the risk. All these combinations are there in overall lung cancer. With this combination, CIP1A1, NAC2, CIP6, and 8.15 higher than So, it's a work study in cell in such study. Uh, and then we go for the risk to the data. Again, this one you can see, P53 coda, this is the risk of 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 the risk All this we have calculated with different genes, androgen receptor genes, progesterone receptor genes, and all we have studied it. So this is all our data. Say to this is GSTT1. Signal acid genes, lung cancer, NAC25, very similar to the issue. Usabitol, P53. Genes increase the risk of lung cancer, CIP1A1. The subvertical cell body one, ERCT2, the other cancer, GSTT1, prostate, this one, cervix, this one. Protective genes. In the case of cervix cancer, GSTT1, if the homozygous condition is protected. If the aphrodisiac is safe, this one. So, see, as for the smoking, lung cancer, if you have a gene NAC25, NAC26, and CZD1, you have more time to smoke, you will have more cervical cancer. And if you don't have these genes, then you are safe. Then also by gene P53, cells, GSD1, prostate, estrogen receptor, and sigmoidon, non-smokers, lung cancer, you have this, follow this one, even if you are not smoking, you become more subtle to lung cancer. And then you have gene infection, lung cancer, these are the genotype, this is this genotype for them, and this is this genotype for serving, prostate, bladder, and cancer. Now, follow the journal which I already told you, and based on this pattern, this data, 
we have to drop the drum. Same that cannot work in the ordinary case. Each individual will have a, his own own drum that will work in the three has to work. First, the basic scientist and the pharmacologist have to join together and the new area is pharmacogenomics. Whether it's a toxicogenomics, all these areas are coming up. That is, people react different to drugs, side effects will be the place. The genes that control the injections as said the markets can be used to identify these genes and so for fun. You can see the different patterns are there and different populations are there. And we try to recover genetic variants and influence the patient's response to drugs. And genomics does it how we have a different phenotypes available. You can have seeing that all patients the same diagnosis, but some are treated, others are not treated. So these are some of the publications that were in the last two years. That is, they're all in the international journal of the cancer genetics of genetics, then DNA cell biology, and our team is a big team between such team here and such students, and our colleagues also in the cancer genes. This boy has got a PhD from Iran. He's got a big one there, and then we have. Some collaborators want to do that. We need tissues, we need samples, we need to get information. We have a very good alert, like the PGI, from the head of the biotechnology, gynecology, like that. We have the aims also. We have a collaboration, and now we are in for making a more and more studies with the adapted techniques. So we're looking for an instrument which is much more so we can have the education question. So that at least in a lot of India, we can work on which are the susceptible populations and that some we will see in that way we can determine the risk of the cancer and the other factors of the cancer. Thank you very much.